I cannot vote to continue with this piece of legislation. I just can't. I've tried everything humanly possible. I can't get there. You're done. This is, this is a no. This is a no. I mean, we, we all knew that uh, Senator Manchin couldn't be trusted. Um, you know, the, the excuses that he just made, um, I think, are a complete bull. 222 Democrats in the House and 49 Democrats in the Senate have been working in, in good faith for six months or longer trying to get this very important piece of legislation done. I think a bit of arrogance on the part of Senator Manchin, who thinks that he should have total say as to what gets passed. Well, I knew he was going to make news, but I didn't know Senator Manchin was going to make that news. I had about 10 more questions about the specifics of Build Back Better, and he said, no, it's a no. Well, the White House came out with this really scathing uh, statement to Jen Psaki writing, Senator Manchin promised to continue conversations in the days ahead to work with us to reach that common ground. If his comments on Fox and written statement indicate an end to that effort, they represent a sudden and inexplicable reversal in his position and a breach of his commitments to the president and the senator's colleagues in the House and Senate. Just as Senator Manchin reversed his position on Build Back Better this morning, we will continue to press him to see if he will reverse his position yet again to honor his prior commitments and be true to his word. Well, the senator reacted to that. His staff, his staff driven. I understand staff. This is not the president. This is staff. And they drove some things and they put some things out that were absolutely in, in, inexcusable. Or they know what it is, and that's it. I knew that we could not change. It was never going to change. It never could change with that many people. So, where are we? Uh, let's bring in our panel. Ben Dominich, publisher of The Federalist. Morgan Ortega is former State Department spokesperson, and Juan Williams is a Fox News analyst. Uh, ben, what's your reaction and the fallout from it? Well, first off, I have to react to the way that the White House staff responded to this situation. You know, look, I think that anyone who was paying attention to what Senator Manchin really wanted, his priorities and everything that was going into this, has known for a long time the amount of movement that would have to happen in order for him to consider voting for this bill. He's been very clear about that since the summer and even earlier, if you were paying attention, uh, about what his criteria looked like. And for the staff of the White House to respond to this situation by ba basically just uh, trying to bully him and calling him essentially a liar, uh, saying that this was, uh, you know, a situation where he, you know, uh, was not someone that they could respect going forward because they couldn't trust his views, you know, suggesting that he's someone who you know, has been all over the map on this one. And from my perspective, he's been very consistent since the beginning, was just completely out of bounds. And as a former staffer myself, I mean, I, I just can't imagine that this was the kind of thing uh, that, that they viewed as, as being a professional response to the situation. The senator himself, I think, has, has been telegraphing this for a long time. And to suggest that he's the only senator who has these views about this measure is, I think, also inaccurate. I think there are a lot of other senators who would have mm -hmm. been with him on this if it was not uh, something that would have been dangerous for them politically. Uh, and I think he was actually speaking for a lot of people when he said, this thing is dead, we couldn't find a way to move it forward, and it's time to move on. Yeah. Juan, they still need his vote. And if Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, is going to put put forward the Build Back Better bill as it's written uh, and make everybody vote on it, uh, Ben may be right. There may be other senators who have a problem with it, senators who may be vulnerable in elections to come. But Steve Clemens, who's a friend of Manchin's, wrote in an op-ed in The Hill uh, this, White House incivility is what lost Joe Manchin. In my view, the control had shifted from Biden, who had said, don't support this unless you can really get behind it, to a White House that wanted to play the blame game. This is not the way Biden usually operates. He doesn't blame either side in a negotiation. He usually works it through, detail by detail, resolving the problem after problem. When tempers cool after the holidays, perhaps the White House will see that with Manchin, temperament matters. Juan? Well, I think Democrats are in shock. I mean, today, it, I mean, you can't talk to any Democrat in on the Hill today, and I'm talking about people who are, you know, liberal, progressives, uh, you know, from Elon Omar that we just saw, uh, to Abigail Spanberger and, of course, people at the White House, and they're, they're all in shock. They had no idea that Joe Manson was going to unilaterally call an end to the negotiations. Um, and part of this, I think, for them is now the question is, 
is this a negotiating ploy, Brett, or is this really the end? Uh, and I think that's what you're referring to in that Hill piece, is that people saying, well, maybe it's the White House attitude, and if that attitude shifts, maybe then Joe Manchin will re-enter uh, talks with uh, Joe Biden as opposed to anything that happened with the staff. But I think that what you've got to focus on here, and I think, you know, I think from the Chuck Schumer point of view, from the White House point of view, just last week, Joe Manchin handed the White House a draft of an outline, if you will, of what was acceptable to him, you know, like a point of negotiation. He did the same thing back in July with uh, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. So I think that there are lots of people who do feel betrayed and feel like, wait, we were negotiating, we were open to you, the infrastructure bill was passed, separated from this social safety net bill, and the elements of the bill are still popular with the American people. The economists say it will not add to inflation, and yet you hear Joe Manchin saying right. this is going to restructure American society. That doesn't sound sincere. Right. Well, the economists, there are different economists who say it would inf affect inflation, and uh, obviously inflation is real, and Manchin is worried about that, Juan, and Morgan, uh, Manchin has said time and time again, don't put programs in there that you know are supposed to last 10 years and only list them as one year in this bill. Don't do the gimmick stuff, and let's make priorities. Is there a way possibly forward? Yes, but maybe not the way they're treating him. Here is Mitch McConnell on Guy Benson's show. Uh, radio show late this afternoon. I never get angry about losing a vote because, you know, the most important vote is always the next vote. So I, I was shocked at the vitriol. Uh, and basically, it seemed to me they were calling Senator Manchin a liar. Um, I, I think that was not smart. This is a 50-50 Senate. Uh, it's going to be 50-50 for another year, uh, and uh, believe me, that's, that's not that's not the way I would have handled a disappointing vote like this. And Morgan, the underlying message there is he's there with open arms if uh, Manchin wants to come come to the Republican side. Well, and it's not just that Manchin broke the news. He broke the news on Fox, which is an original sin for the progressives in the party. Uh, congratulations on that, Brett. By the way, I think we were all stopped uh, in our tracks for our Sunday brunch whenever you had that interview. Um, but listen, let me. I want to go back to something that Ben said that I think is really important, and that's the staffing uh, question. And this is what Steve Clemens wrote about in The Hill that you referenced earlier. For our viewers, why does it matter what the staff are doing and what they're communicating? I think it's crucial important because as staffing the Secretary of State, there was not a statement that I put out that he did not sign off on, that he did not agree to. So you have Joe Biden, who is supposed to be bringing everyone together, who's Manchin's buddy and his friend, and his staff are beating up on him. So there's one or two things happening. One, uh, Joe Biden is approving all of this and is playing buddy-buddy to Manchin in private, but, you know, is, is fully letting his staff beat up on him. Or two, his staff is running amok uh, or issuing statements even before the one that the White House issued yesterday, the one that really set him off was a few weeks ago, or excuse me, a few days ago. So there's an issue here that either Joe Biden is allowing his staff to do this or his staff is, is doing things that he doesn't know about, issuing statements that are really uh, upending the policy and political debates in D.C. And I think that's concerning. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.